In the tunnel. In the tunnel. In the tunnel. You're listening to In the Tunnel. Welcome to In the Tunnel, episode number 74. Uh, yes, we've been away for a month, but we're back now. So, uh, nothing to say about that. Just your normal five-week, six-week absence? Was it six weeks? I know it was, a, I know it was four weeks, to five. at least. Four and a half, five weeks. Okay, I was like, yeah, um, life got in the way. There was a, a few things on my end that prevented us from recording for the past three weeks. I mean, I've had to do three grad school projects in like three weekends too. So but let's not say that like it was going to get much easier, but. No, but, like, the fact that I was away from a computer for two weeks didn't really help. Which is, you know, a very big statement in itself. Yeah. Seeing that that is your job to be on computers. Yeah. So, um, sorry about that, but, yeah, we're back, and we're going to catch up with sports right now. Like how the brand somehow regressed to their old uniform of the early 2000s and think that this <laughs> is somehow an improvement. Oh my god. All right. Yeah. So anyway, if you can't tell, first thing we're going to talk about is the NFL. Um, out of this, what I like out of all the scores and everything, I'm just surprised that the Washington football team beat the Eagles. Um, any surprises on your end? You know, I know that the Dolphins suck, but, you know, after all the money that they spent in free agency, you think that they could have put up a little bit more than 11 points? Uh, nothing really surprises me about the Packers being the Vikings. That's kind of like their thing. Yeah. That's kind of like the Steelers beating the Browns. Um, the Jaguars winning. I mean, yeah, the Colts now have Phillip Rivers, but it doesn't really mean anything. Not really. Like, they still have an iffy wide receiving core. Yeah, but it was it was only a one score game, so a, like it's not that out there. I don't think Bears beat the Lions, but then again, what does that really mean for either team? <laughs> Nothing. Uh, the Raiders put up thirty four points, which to me is good news for the Raiders because. I don't know, the past 15 years kind of scream of, like, incompetence when it comes to scoring points, so. Yeah, but I mean, I, I think they need to, to like, continue this. Even, it, it's a one-score win, and I, I really still don't know how the team's going to do going forward because they gave up 30 points. Like, you're not going to score 30-some points against every team. Your defense needs to do something. I mean, Josh Jacobs is pretty fucking good. Yeah, but Josh Jacobs is one player. So I'm sorry, do you see anybody slowing down Christian McCaffrey on the other side of the game? No. And Christian McCaffrey is one player. Yeah. Uh, know, the, Pan the Panthers could be fine, but in order in you know, for me to give props to one of my uh good friends, Markel Harrison, uh who told me on Sunday their defense is trash, <laughs> <laughs> and that's a Panthers fan. So, that's well, I mean, I your defense gave up thirty-four points, so it's like not a good showing. Correct. Anyway, moving on. Um, the Bills take care of the Jets, although maybe a little bit of a letdown for the Bills because they somehow were. Uh, able to allow themselves to give up 17 points to a team that basically has no offense. Literally uh, has no offense. Le'Veon Bell 
Le'Veon Bell is on the short term IR now, so yep. literally no offense. <laughs> Sam Darnold is not progressing, so literally no offense. So here's an idea: maybe if you're the Jets, stop taking USC quarterbacks at the n- in the number three overall pick or something. <laughs> you know, I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty know, sure that was Mark Sanchez's uh, draft spot too. That didn't work too well. You know, things that make sense aren't what the Jets do, unfortunately. So as much as it makes sense to us, I'm sorry, Jets fans, but it's just going to keep happening. You mean to tell me that their idea of, like, redesigning their jerseys to look like, you know, to put, like, stripes across them Mm -hmm. to look like they're an actual airplane, which doesn't really work when a shirt has sleeves and goes down? (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Definitely (laughs) a thing they would do. I'm an aeroplane, as long as I go like this and put my arms out. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, so the, shit ever. the Ravens uh, destroy the Browns. Yeah. yeah, speaking of quarterbacks not progressing, Baker make it feel holy shit. And, and you know, it's weird, when he first got drafted, I was a, I, I was a advocate for him. I thought he was the guy. Because he had the confidence, he was yeah, like you know. the con- he had the confidence of Johnny Manziel without the stupidity, mm-hmm. and I thought that was going to be enough to take the Browns to the next level. And the Browns, to their credit, have been better than what the Browns were before Mayfield <laughs> Which was there. Isn't saying much though, like they weren't four and twelve; they're now like six and ten, seven and nine. Ah, uh, but God, it's it's you know, just not good. But the thing is, right and. Even even with what I've been saying about the other teams, like, this is literally the first game of the season. There was no preseason. So... Anybody. Yeah, yeah, for anybody. That, that's an important statement to, to clarify. For anybody. This is literally the first game of the season that just have happened. So, yeah. I wouldn't be surprised to see, like, two... Or, or you know, like... Next week we will we will get like a shaky performance from other teams, and a good performance from ones that played bad this week. Yeah, the Browns are going to be the shaky performance of the future. But, but I, I hate to break it to you. Oh, no, that, no. That's something that's not changing. I, I agree, but what I'm saying is that like, it's going to be a f- three or so weeks, I think, until like players are fully into it right because they're literally just gone straight to hard contact football and there was no preseason like soft whatever right so i don't think like this is what you expect from all the teams like i don't think some of them played to where they're supposed to of course like in the browns case they're still going to be pretty bad unfortunately for your browns fans out there uh, but because we, we have an audience in Cleveland, dude, I live in Pittsburgh. I've never met anybody who has gone to Cleveland, and we're with the next state over. It's <laughs> been, been almost Cleveland. a year. I've been yeah. to Cleveland. Well, uh, and I told my buddy Markel this. I said because we were trashing the Browns, of course. I said, <laughs> I said, have you ever met the person who said that you know, like they were happy that they went to Cleveland? I mean, I know people in Cleveland, though. Yeah, but are they happy? They are hardcore Browns fans. Are they happy? I can't answer that. Exactly. But that doesn't mean they're sad. But, you know, that this is the thing where cities have brands. Like, in Pittsburgh, it's the yins or blue collar steel worker shit, even though the steel industry is crashed. So hard. That's the brand. The brand in Cleveland is you trash talk LeBron for leaving and you're just absolutely sad because the Indians suck and have uh, a name that needs to be changed. You don't have a hockey team. The football team sucks and the Cavs suck. Their brand is misfortune. (laughs) Oh, all right. Anyway, moving on. Seahawks. Beat the Falcons 38-25. Not really surprised. Uh, Chargers edge out the Bengals. The Cardinals 
beat the 49ers and the Bucks lose by one point to the Saints. Oh, and uh, Dallas loses to the Rams. One point, 11 points. Oh, 11 points. I can't read. <laughs> Good <laughs> me. I tried to make these graphics big, too. I was going to do just like this, the box score shit that we had on the right side mm. for all of them. <laughs> it would have been nightmare fuel. Yeah. So I tried right, sorry. They it, lose by 11 graphic. points. So yeah. Brady's debut doesn't go as planned, I guess. Yeah, but that doesn't really mean anything if the Patriots win, though. Like, that's the thing. Is this was supposed to be the start of the regression for both sides? Yeah. Like, this was supposed to be Tampa's last hurrah window because, like, at best they have two years to compete. Yeah. But at, at worst and more realistically, eventually Brady's age shows and, you know, the whole joke of they go down to Florida reti- to retire – um, completely but it was true, all supposed though. to be the Patriots like missing the piece. Okay. And then they just change up with Cam Newton, start running the ball. Because mm-hmm. that's something that Belichick does is he, he has a mobile quarterback. He, he, Belichick just changed systems in a heartbeat and didn't lose a step. Yep. Um... So we all have to deal with that fucking world again. Yep. Uh, and then to round out the Monday night, uh, Pittsburgh beat the Giants 26-16, and Tennessee beat Denver 16-14. That was the late Monday game, which was, I, I think the Pittsburgh Giants one was more exciting, but that's because I like the Giants and you like Pittsburgh. <laughs> well, here's, a, here's what I'll ask you. Which was m- more surprising to you? In the Titans Broncos game, that Steven Guskowski, who was like a career long good kicker, missed like three or four field goals. Or Saquon Barkley only has six rushing yards. I think the more surprising thing is Saquon Barkley only has six rushing yards. Now, keep in mind, he did, saying he did have like 70 yards overall. Yeah. yeah. But, so it's not I've... like he was. Stop that grape. I've been saying though, like Gutskowski is like not as you, not where he was for a while. You, yeah, well, the Patriots let him go. I think that that part is clear. Uh and also I'm pretty sure we're missing the Chiefs uh, Texans game on this graphic. Man, we've been away for like five weeks. If I miss something from Thursday. <laughs> It's it's Thursday today. Yes. Like, we're already pushing this being a week behind. Yeah, so there is a game tonight, too. Oh, oh. And the Bengals fumbled the ball. Look at that. There you go. <laughs> if, On third and seven, they lost, like, 20 yards. So if you can't figure out when we're recording this. <laughs> I have Tyler Boyd going, which is because Chris Godwin got a uh, – Tom Brady put a pass right on the money to put Godwin in the concussion protocol, so now I have to put in Tyler Boyd. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyway, so that's your week one scores aside from Thursday, as it is Thursday today. Uh, Look, so... man, Patrick Mahomes gets paid like five grand an hour. I don't make that much in a month. Like, shit is going to be fine if we don't touch on the Chiefs game. Yeah. Anyway, so... Uh, after one week, uh, here's your passing leaders. In the loss, Ryan had 450 yards. Um, they signed Todd Gurley, but they don't really have anybody else, and they can't rely on Todd Gurley as a bell cow yep. back. He doesn't have... Yep. He's got them old man arthritis knees, as he would elegantly put it. <laughs> um, and then he's trying to get AARP checks, which is what you call it when the Los Angeles uh, Rams don't pay you at the end of your contract. Yep. Um, uh, yeah, so Ryan has the most yards. I'm not surprised. Uh, Rogers and Rivers are um, basically connect. the same many yards in Sagan. Sure. 364 and 363, these are indeed numbers that are correlating. <laughs> yes. Uh, um, and then you have Wilson, Russell Wilson, and Josh Allen to round out the top five. Yep, pretty much. All right. 
Uh, Which, by the way, the Bills never really let Josh Allen throw that much, despite his his cannon of an arm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. the fact that they're starting to open up the playbook for him to pass more is more of a like watch out league kind of thing. Yeah. Now that they have Diggs and John Brown, they're they're pretty set. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's look at rushing leaders. Uh, you want to go? Uh, yeah, so Clyde Edwards-Hilaire uh, started out the season and launched up to the leaderboard with 138 yards, followed by Derek Henry with 116 yards because it's kind of hard to stop a bowling ball on a field. You'd think that grass can slow down a bowling ball, but nope. for the sake of this analogy, it does not. Nope. Uh, then Benny Snell, who took over for the inconsistent James Conner, mm-hmm. went off for 113. Ezekiel Nose Ring Elliott had 96, um, and it meant nothing because yeah. they lost. And then the Panthers, Christian McCaffrey with 96, although I'm sure he added like another 75 yards receiving. Yeah, I think I think it was. I'm like sure. 70. I'm pretty sure Teddy Bridgewater threw for like 170 yards, and somehow like 80 percent of them went to Christian McCaffrey. <laughs> if if last year was any indication, and that's the last time I've watched a Panthers game, I'd probably guess that most of the pass plays are geared towards Christian McCaffrey, mm-hmm. despite the fact that they signed Robbie Anderson. Mm-hmm. All right, so let's conveniently forget their thing called receiving yards and move to college football. Look, the NFL didn't put up the graphic. I, I can't be held responsible for shit like that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Multi million, do- tens of million do- of dollars every year come in. They couldn't fucking find the time to create a top five. Me, on the other hand, I'm working two jobs in one day, taking two classes, enrolled in two sports leagues, and I'm in a, in a relationship. I don't fucking have the time. I barely have time to get gas in my car. <laughs> yeah, so uh, what's up with LSU, huh? Oh, yeah. So get this. LSU hasn't played a game yet this season. Somehow 75% of their team got COVID. Despite having no contact with anybody but themselves. So somebody brought it in. Somebody, or either that, or was it Mike the Tiger, whoever the whatever the name of the mascot is? Hmm. The mascot brought COVID. Maybe it was it you. Did. No. Was it you? Did you go to Louisiana on your trip down? <laughs> no to way. Well, that's good. And yeah, Tron yeah. is uh, a recovering um, positive case, as we call it in the mental world. <laughs> and uh, we salute him for his services. <laughs> Not that uh, type being, of positive case, being, man. Being a guinea pig in the fight against coronavirus. <laughs> oh. He said, give me the antibodies no matter how I get them. Anyway, so yeah, like, what are they all going to quarantine themselves for like a month? Isn't that what they said? They'll like come back in a month or something? It's LSU and it's the SEC, man. They're probably going to take like two days off, cover themselves in, in like... I don't know, crawfish, just, you know, shampoo and soap up with some crawfish and a, a nice hurricane and call call it a recovery, and then they'll be back on the field by Saturday. Oh, God, no. Uh, Honestly, right. hur- hurricane season will probably be the best thing that happens to the SEC right now, just because it'll force them to, like, not play football and for everybody to get healthy. Yeah, I mean... The SEC is too attached to playing. <laughs> yeah. And then the Big Ten is back. It is, yeah. Which means... I don't know. Somehow, after all this shit, you can have a league come back. They're going to start playing on October 24th and still like probably have two teams on the verge of the college football playoff, which probably... To me, it shouldn't be allowed because if you're not going to be there for the whole season, don't come, don't come back to the party late and say, "Hey, look, I made a mistake. Now put me on the on the grand stage." Yep. If you want to play your games and you want to get your money, fine, but don't come to me and say, "I want everything." 
take the compromise, understand you'll get your money, you'll get your revenue, you'll get the satisfaction of your fans. I don't want to hear shit about you're not going to the playoffs. Okay. I don't think it's fair to the other teams that, you know, expose themselves to potentially getting this stuff for a longer period of time to have to sit at home at the end of the season knowing that their risk didn't pay off in any kind of dividends at all. Fair enough. And I'm not saying that as a Pitt fan because, trust me, Pitt's not finding a way anywhere near the top four. Yeah. They'd be lucky if they scratch the top 15. Um, I was going to say 25, but I guess we can go. They're 25 now. You know why? Because the Big Ten wasn't playing. <laughs> they couldn't put anybody in the rankings. Well, sorry. Now you can't scratch anywhere near the top 25. It's not true. We have a month. Yeah, but the Big Ten's back. You're, you're hoping. Oh, yeah, because Michigan never loses to anybody outside the top 25. <laughs> Especially in, like, November. <laughs> Ohio State never gets you know, loses to Purdue, like, at Purdue. Despite the fact that it always happens, despite the fact that Purdue gets absolutely shit-smoked at Ohio State. Yep. All right. So, like, anything can happen. Wisconsin will lose a game eventually. That's how Wisconsin works. Yes. There's only so much cheese before someone takes a shit on the field. All right. Moving on. No more. It's a lactose intolerance joke. All right, on to the NHL, because we were going way too tangent there. Because uh, that made sense, grammatically speaking. Made enough sense to me, it's all that matters. Sure. Yeah. I don't know how to read. All right, well, uh, so the Stars are currently waiting for the winners of the Lightning and Islanders. Uh, we both think it's going to be the Lightning, don't we? Yep, I think that the Islanders are on such borrowed time. And yeah. This is why I texted Sean uh, a couple days ago when the Islanders were down 3-1. Or no, it was right after they won their second game in this series. I was like, I really don't know why the Islanders even play tonight. Like, Tampa outmatches the Islanders in every area. And don't get me wrong, Simeon Barlamov has been a good NHL caliber goaltender for a long time. Yeah. But he was never the guy in D.C. Turned out not to be the guy in Colorado. Yep. He for sure is not the guy in on the app. Mm-hmm. He's got to be in his mid-30s. Um, he's been around for a long time, but I, I don't think he's he's capable. I think Grice I mean, was better, but Grice was not that good in the series. I mean, you know I, I just think that the Islanders played... Played probably some of the like they they have a great situation like the situation with twelve twelve team uh, playoff uh, like kind of helped them. Well, here's the thing: the Islanders have a really good defense oriented system, but once that fails and you give up like eight goals to the the Lightning in one of the games in the series, but. It's clear you're outmatched. But the thing is, the Lightning are the team that are going to score eight goals one day and then just be blanked. But I still think that their offense is just too good for the defensive style of the Islanders. I agree. You have star power. Whereas the Islanders have, well, Barzal is supposed to be the star. But Barzal Barzal is the power. They have Barzal power. Right. But points-wise, we know this because we had him on our fantasy team. Barzal doesn't put up those kinds of points. Mm-hmm. Or no, we didn't have him on the fantasy team. Nobody did. He never even got picked up over the course of the season. That's how little I think, point production he but gave. I also think that it was a combination of like like there weren't needs to like add drop forwards a lot in our league. Okay, but the face of the franchise should have been if there was an should have been on a team in theory. Okay. I mean, and then your number two guy, statistically speaking, is what? Jordan Eberle? I think so. Which, I mean, was a big hype guy, hype around all the skill he had in Edmonton, but it's never fully materialized. 
Mm -hmm. So it's a purely defense-oriented system. So when Tampa gets going, it's it's an outmatch from the get-go. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think it'll be a good series, though. I, I don't know. I still think the, I think the Lightning are better than the Stars. Um, Islanders? No, no I, I'm assuming the Lightning's going to win. So sure. we're talking okay. about finals. Pencil it in. So, but yeah, like, I think if the Lightning make the finals, they win. Uh, I really. Way, I, I just want to say if the Islanders win, they're not my champion. Yeah, yeah I, I agree with that too, but I just think the Lightning are the better team out of those three. Mm hmm. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Well, because the Lightning. The Lightning have the same big names that the Stars have, but the Stars' names are older. Mm -hmm. um, aside from that, like as far as like the NHL playoffs wrapping up, though, I think a lot of these games are pretty good. I think they did the bubble pretty well. Like they didn't really try to include fans because there were none there. But Canada I think the production was quality was good, and the games were some of the games were good. Aside from that, Game Seven at three p.m. on a weekday was it? Like, why? It was you're, the best... You're asking the wrong person. It was the best Game 7. It was 3 p.m. on a weekday. Like, what are they doing? Was that the one that went five overtimes? It, it went a lot. It was such an exciting game. But it was at 3 p.m. And they had another game at 7. Oh, that was like the opening round, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the beginning game. of the next round was at 7 the same day. So, fun fact... I had a deck hockey uh, game that night, and our game finished before that game finished. Yeah. And like you said, that game started at 3. Our deck hockey game didn't start till like, 7 or 8. No, no, but, like, they had that game at 3, right? They also had another game after. That got came, that put, got pushed to the next day. I was like, oh, my God. Like, literally day was, one of the bubble. But nobody, that game had such low viewership, and it was the best game of the bubble. Are you, sh yeah, it's the best game, but are you really surprised that people don't want to stick around for six or five or six overtimes? No, no, it wasn't even, like, even beginning viewership was low, because they started a game seven at three in the afternoon. It wasn't a game seven. It was, yeah. Uh, it was, it was, no, no, no that the was, game uh, I'm talking about is a game seven. Okay, I was talk okay, so we're talking about different games. Alright, yeah, but like so I, I have qualms with their scheduling anyway. Um but I think they did a good job and I really like the bubble. Well that's the thing, is hockey being different than basketball? Basketball it's you know, high scoring enough and obviously you have ones, twos, threes in terms of point production. It's harder to keep going overtime over after overtime whereas hockey you only score in ones and then like it just becomes clamps mm -hmm. but the, i mean it's a different game all right anyway on to the next bubble yeah the nba the nba Where the phoenix suns won the title and they canceled the rest of the playoffs i wish i wish too we Would know have been you nice. wish. Uh, anyway. I have dreams, and they never come true. Anyway. Uh, what do we have? The Heat Celtics. So the Heat are up one nothing, And the uh, game's going the on today, right? Sure. Basketball happens every day. Basketball never sleeps. At least that's how, what Nike told me. <laughs> All right. And then the Lakers and Nuggets. Nuggets. So the Nuggets that came down from 3-1 to beat Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and the Clippers. Mm -hmm. And the Lakers then turned around and said, yeah, we were never thinking that we were going to play the Clippers in the conference finals anyway. Yeah. Well, yeah. Which, you know what the sad thing is? Is the Clippers had Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan, Chris Paul never got past the second round. Yep. And then they kind of went down a little bit. Then they retooled with Lou Williams, Patrick Beverly, 
uh, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, and they still didn't get past the second round. Yeah, I mean... Just a team that's destined not to get past her. To be fair, though, like, in terms of... I I don't know how many basketball games you caught, but I watched a few when I was uh, um, in Georgia for those two weeks. I was a did not have my computer with me. Uh, and I don't know. It was just like every time I saw those call in fans, I cringed and I just like had to stop watching for like 20 minutes. And some of the games were great, but every time I looked at those fans, I just couldn't. Dude, I, I watched most of the, um, Seeding games, they called them, so the end of the regular yeah. season game. Because, you know, I wanted to see what was going on with Phoenix, so I would watch games that would impact the standings. I watched a Mavericks-Blazers game, man. <laughs> and I shit you not, I was like, I have 30 minutes before I have to leave for a deck hockey game. And it were like five minutes left in the game, and it was... Like, okay, plenty of time for this game to be over. I left for the fucking game before that thing was over. Like, you They think... wouldn't stop fouling each other. You think... literally every time down the court, one direction foul, other direction foul. But it was like, Jesus Christ, someone just put a hand up instead of a hand out. The thing is, right, like, you'd think these games go faster because there's no, like, no. Fan waiting for fans to quiet down or any of that stuff. Because now you you can re- you can challenge plays in the NBA now too. Yeah, but you so only have one. Right? Anywhere, uh, I think it's like if you win one, you have a second. Yeah, one. if you win one, well, because so, if you lose but the first the, one, you lose your timeout. But the yeah, but the thing is, is this is the NBA, and if there's anywhere near a debatable moment, someone will challenge it. Yeah, it could be like a meaningless. Like out of bounds, call in the second quarter. Someone will challenge it. All right. Like, okay, we're just gonna make this longer, I guess. Yeah. So, uh, what are your predictions for final? I kind of want the Heat to win. Okay. Just because they they have like the least star studded roster, mm-hmm. but at the same time, probably one of the more solidified ones. Mm-hmm. But. I don't know, man. It just seems like it's the Lakers to lose. Well, I mean, what's your prediction for the final? So you think it's going to be Lakers Heat or Lakers Celtic? I think Lakers Heat and the Lakers win in six. All right, I I would agree with you. Actually, I'd say five. All right. Uh, after, I mean, I still think after, I, I think it's Lakers Heat too. So uh, and Lakers are going to win. After seeing how the Lakers just dismantled the Rockets in five games, it's hard for me to see the Lakers being able to. You know, have a six or seven game series. It just seems to me like if they're not sweeping, it's in five. Okay. All right. On to the other basketball. In uh, yeah. in startling news, the ACC proposed to hold a twenty twenty one NCAA Division One tournament with every single team. So we tried to find a three hundred and fifty team bracket. But uh, kudos to the one listing that just basically gave us an NCAA tournament bracket from like three years ago. Yeah. But the rest are just hardware brackets. Yeah. As you can see, that's not possible. So. Which is, it, I, I have to call out Google on this one too. Because when you say 350 team bracket, none of these brackets have anywhere near 350 pieces. No. Like, you, you got to at least pick up two of the three words. <laughs> that one wasn't good. Uh, by the way, and this was a Coach K idea, believe it or not, is Coach K does not give a fuck about uh, player safety because he's raking in money and has his name on the court at Duke University. So, if we're in the middle of a pandemic, Sean, and I'm going to pose just a stupid of an idea this was that you know i i listened to the radio and i listened to analysts talk about why you know the ncaa logically speaking wouldn't do this 
Let's talk about how fucking stupid this idea was. Let's say on every team, because uh, you have to consider like uh, managers, all coaching staff, players, trainers. Let's say there's a, a contingency of like 30 people per school. So let's see here. Um, let's say there, and this is on the low end because there's more than 350 people. Yep. So we're looking at a 10,500 person bubble. If we were to bubble this tournament. Yeah. Now, no. that's a whole fucking town. <laughs> and you need a few arenas to actually get the games going here. So, unless... And I mean, if, if, if they're doing ho- If they're doing hotels here, Sean, they'd have to bubble a whole fucking state. <laughs> There's just not enough rooms in one city for that. You'd basically be kicking everybody else in a hotel out. Yeah. So, and then let's go on top of the player safety thing. How long does a 350, okay, a 350 team tournament, let's say they play so, two games a week. So, so every team plays every other day. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, they do in, in March Madness is two games a week. So let's say three. Uh, yeah, we'll do your idea three days a week. Yeah. It's still like a two month thing. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at it, right? Who's not going to get coronavirus in that span? You're going down from like 350 to like 256, I think. Because that, that's your closest number that's like power of two. Right? Yeah. So, like. You, you're you going from a gigantic number to not even 100 less. Barely. Not even 100. Let's also look at the fact that if you play three times a week and you're playing a different school every time you play, eventually there's going to be an outbreak in coronavirus because how do you expect to contain 10,500 people <laughs> how do you, in oh, multiple places? Hold on. 10,500 people that are just players and staff, right? Now, you also have to look at feeding these 10,500 people, which probably requires another 1,000 staff. Okay. And then let's not forget broadcast staff. Uh, broadcast arenas, staff. Let's not ar- forget ar- Arena staff. operation staff. Hotel staff. <laughs> By the end of this, we're basically looking at 15,000 people. Yeah. And all of these people aren't going to be bubbled. Some people are going to be coming from their homes. So there's definitely going to be an outbreak. And the great thing about this is Coach K does not give a shit because he's (laughs) probably making $10 million a year. Coach K could probably fund this thing himself. But the second they're like, look, we have to move this to like Sioux Falls, South Dakota, Coach K is going to be like, look, I thought we were doing this in North Carolina. I'm out. (laughs) Yeah, so there's no You tell me that we don't have enough dorm rooms at Duke? Yeah, 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 they need to. Yeah, pop coach, over to there's UNC only like five thousand seats in the arena. <laughs> yeah, but you're not gonna have people watching these games. I mean, look, I, it would be hard pressed to get me to not watch the schools I went to and the schools that were really. No, no, but I'm talking about like. But at every the game. other fucking game. Oh yeah, well not at the game. Hmm. They're college students, man. Hmm. There's going to be an outbreak if there's fifteen thousand people. Yep. Any college. This is why we're seeing colleges Michigan. having to – no, this is why we're having to see colleges basically like ex, uh, kick people off campus and still not reimburse tuition money because it's the only way to incentivize people to like not waste their parents' money or not waste money. So like there's going to be an outbreak for sure and people are still getting COVID for sure. At every fucking college. Yeah. So, All right. Uh, now that which that is BS going is over. To, which, by the way, is going to be horrendous when Christmas season comes around. Yep. Uh, anyway, Everybody's now that the gonna get sick all over again. BS of a 350 team tournament's over and we're never going to talk about it again. Uh, let's oh, we move, are. Let's move on to the MLB. So... They released that their postseason will be played in a bubble or four. 
Um, uh, neutral site bubbles, yeah. Yeah, four. Uh, two in Texas, two in California, with the finals being in Texas. Uh, I think it's a good idea. Um, I think they're just trying to put as much in the new Rangers stadium as they can. Yeah, so that, I, I noticed that too. Loss. It's not a net loss that way. Yeah, I mean, I noticed that too. Uh, also, it's two set. It's sixteen teams. Yeah, they did an expansion for this year. Yeah, uh, so that's a that's a pretty big difference. Uh, yeah. It makes the games more even, though. Like it's good the same all the way through. Nobody has an yeah. advantage. Nobody has to play a one single wild card game. Thank God. Yeah, good good year for the Pirates to be the worst team in baseball. As the as the playoff race actually, the number of spots expands, and it and the first series worse. is a best of three, not a best of one. Yeah, all those years of uh, playing and getting eliminated in the wild card round in that best of one game, yep. we should have been holding out all of our talent for a pandemic to hit. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I agree with you though. They're probably just trying to shove everybody into the new Texas Rangers stadium think it's just because like the owners and i'm sure the mlb probably contributed some kind of financial component into that stadium thinking that they were going to immediately reap the benefits of it uh in revenues uh but yeah so i mean uh let's be honest though like the beginning of the mlb season was so sketch uh yeah, it, was, it was really bad it was so bad it so still kind of is it is bad but the thing is, at least they're like, yeah, I, we're getting all 16 teams into, like, you know, their own spaces. Uh, and, and that's good. And at least, like, Houston and Arlington aren't so bad at, in terms of far apart. And then San Diego and Los Angeles is a few hours. The only problem time will be that one team that has to travel from San Diego to Arlington, Texas. One being that Texas is probably going to have another wave of cases sooner or later. Yeah, I mean, did they already have another one? So they're probably due for another one in a few weeks. It's like the tides, man. It goes in and out. Yep. So All right. Don't mess with Texas because if you do, you get COVID. Yeah. Um, I mean, to be fair, though, the number of cases happening in the MLB has gone down. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was really bad at the beginning. So they've curved it a little bit but that was just players being idiots at the beginning i think mm-hmm. um and actually I- i'm kind of looking forward to this type of I-, I wish this type of playoff format was like normal because like i'd actually want to watch like a non best of one i think it, it's bs unfortunately for the money making powers of mlb like the yankees it means that you with these neutral side games that you get away from the short porch and yeah. have your main advantage taken away from you but like no no but what i'm saying is like in terms of format i like it a lot but like the fact that it's after a 60 game season makes this mean not really that much uh but i, I wish I this mean, format I, I, wise was there look i mean as a pirates fan i gave up on the season a long time ago but basically uh, i didn't know that the season was basically over and teams that have already clinched playoff spots until today. Yeah, it's basically over, dude. Like, there's not much that's going to happen. I had no idea that the Dodgers, like, magic number to clinch was, like, two. Yeah. It, again, it's a 60-game season. So, like, that's why I'm not really looking forward to the MLB playoffs. But I really wish this format was at the end of a regular, regular season. They should have just played a doubleheader every day. <laughs> Packed in, like, 120 games. Do you think the uh, players would go for that? It's like the least grueling sport. Yeah, but apparently the MLB couldn't pay them for like more than 80 games or something. Yeah, they could have. I said apparently. I didn't say it was true. All right. Anyway, moving on. Uh, You pose a question. Oh, yeah. So uh, I pose a question. This is a, a new feature that, you know, I eventually and sometimes have thoughts. Surprising. And so, yeah, it, it always worries my mother. <laughs> Let's see. 
All right, I'm just paying attention to see what's going on with this hockey game real quick. Okay, I thought that the Islanders scored, but it was just a replay. Um, anyway, yeah, so I pose a question to you. The Boise State football team, obviously, they have a blue turf football field. My question to you is, of the 32 NFL teams, which do you think would be the most likely to adopt a field the color of their team other than like the Jets because I mean it Man, the Jets it, don't they, count I get it yeah um I think the Texans used to uh, too dark of colors to to do anything like this uh Let, let's go through the, all the teams we'll go and we'll like establish yes or no's um okay so let's start in the so I, I don't think the Giants would do it. I don't think the Jets would do it. Hold on. I will fucking give you the list. I was just gonna pull them up. Okay. The Buffalo Bills. I can I see, see it. the Bills. I can, I see, can it. see the Bills. I can see the Bills doing blue or even red. I think blue with red accents. Blue with a red uh, out of bounds marker? Yeah. Uh, the New England Patriots, no, because no Belichick will never, never. let that happen. Uh, the Jets, don't count. If the Jets did black, I guess, because it's an but no, it, but nobody it would happen. paint their field black. But, okay, but here's the thing: the Jets are a team desperate enough for marketing moves that I feel like it could happen. But then, if I were the Jets, everything would be white, and all the like in this yeah, thing, well, yeah. you would basically reverse True. the color. Everything you, would be you, white. You can't do a black field because the ball's brown. It doesn't make any yeah. sense. So, like, if they wanted to make the whole field white and all the lettering green, sure. Mm -hmm. But I still don't see it. Uh, the Miami Dolphins. Now, a Miami Dolphins orange or even, like, the a teal? true teal would yeah. be really cool. It would be really cool. But then that means switching the turf, which I don't think they would mind in Florida. No. To, like, have less maintenance to do on the grass. Um... The Ravens, I, uh, it would I could see like it would look cool, cool with but the I purple. Don't see it. Yeah, I, I don't see that being the Ravens brand. Yeah, the yeah. Steelers wouldn't do it because it's just no. against everything in Pittsburgh yeah. to like make it about design. Mm -hmm. Um, the Bengals for sure would do it, oh, yeah. but it would look like it, some. It would look dog. like somebody vomited. It, it would feet. basically look like the Bengals, like. The Bengals, they have that big letter B at midfield now. It would basically just be like that. It would just be like stripes everywhere. Like every five yards would be different stripes. Yeah, it's not. It wouldn't look cool, but they would do it's it. It's not a good look. And then the Browns, the Browns won't do it. No, they can't either because they can't use brown. Well, it would be orange, but. Yes. But then that would just look too close to the Bengals. I think they should just make their field a gigantic picture of like an uh, IMDb score of the movie draft day. <laughs> All right. Um, Next team. The Jacksonville Jaguars, I think, would look really good. I think so, too. Either the yellow it. or the teal. Yeah, I can see it. The Titans would be really good with their light blue. Mm -hmm. I think their, uh, like, the darker blue and the red that's in their logo make really good accent colors, too. The Colts? No. And you said the Texans, no. The Chiefs? No. Nah. nah. That, that's not a Midwestern thing. Nope. Yep. I mean, it, it's a Boise State thing, <laughs> but that's like make a statement in the middle of nowhere kind of thing. Yeah. The Chargers? Uh, I don't... I mean... I, I don't see, like, if they use their light blue, maybe, because then they could do, like, you know, like, kind of lighting bolt kind of accents. But I don't see them doing it. The Raiders, the Raiders, if they went silver, yeah, would be they'd do it. But they, yeah, no matter it, how would, it, it looks, would look, it would look cooler black though, because that would be like the but, black hole, like fan no matter, section. That would bring new meaning to it. But no matter how it looks, they would do it. Like they are a team that just doesn't care. They used to not care for sure. Yeah. Oh, uh, the Denver Broncos. Nah. Nah. They, their colors just don't warrant it. 
No. Washington, I think Washington is about a year or two away from doing it. Yeah, I could see Just it. because until Washington, they have a new brand identity, they're going to look for any kind of visual that they can. Washington was the first team I thought about when you said this. Mm-hmm. First team. Uh, the Cowboys. I feel like the Cowboys would do it because Jerry Jones just goes balls Jerry, to the wall. Yeah, to Jerry do Jones anything. would do it. That's uh, it. The not e- the Cowboys. Jerry Jones. <laughs> the Eagles wouldn't no. do it, I don't think. No. I, not that it wouldn't be a good Philly idea. I just think that the Philly. If the Eagles did that. Well, they'd probably make it like the color of Duracell batteries so that, like, every time they throw them at, like, the, you know, the players or opposing teams, they can just be like, oh, no, it's just like debris from the field. Uh, the Giants, The I think that the Giants would look cool with a true blue field. I think they would look cool, but they ain't going to do it. They just have to change the logo to be a white NY uh, Giants logo. Like I, they do I just in the don't see the... Now. I don't see the Giants doing it with the current like climate and their own... But the team. thing is, they did it with, to their uniform. But that's different. That's like, basically... But the thing is, their uniform has like no design. It's just blue. Blue. They wouldn't do they it to the field, do, I think that they should. That's just but me. they won't. As much as they I agree They have a better you, opportunity than the Jets to make something else. As much as I agree with you, they're not going to do it. Like, I agree with you. A true blue field would look cool. They're just not going to do it. All right. NFC North. The Packers wouldn't do it. No. That's against all that is. And I'd say the same thing for the Bears. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no Those old, old, old school founding father kind of teams wouldn't do it. Yep, no way. But the Detroit Lions for sure. Oh should. yeah, oh yeah. It's the only thing that can't choke in the fourth quarter. <laughs> Although they'll find a way, they'll probably set off like pyrotechnics, like the Rams did that one year in St. Louis, and like you know, like start a fire on the field. Yep. And then the Vikings, the Vikings. It would look cool. I think it would look cool. It would but look I don't cool, see him doing it. But, yeah. But it just doesn't seem to be the brand. Mm-hmm. Um, the Saints for sure should. Oh, yeah. If Mardi Gras theme. I think every 20 yards should just be a Mardi Gras different color. Like, you got the purple. You got the green. Mm-hmm. You got all of that. Uh, the Buccaneers, the Buccaneers on red would look pretty fire, but it would be, it would be a better look if it was the jerseys that they wore for the past few years instead of the ones that they just switched back to. Okay, I agree with you, but I don't see Tampa like coloring their field. Yeah, no. I'd say the same for the Falcons. I don't see it happening. I don't see it happening, especially eventually they- the Falcons are going to need it. But but also like they they would have to basically red out their field because the only other colors they use are basically white and black. They should adopt the uh, the gold that the Atlanta Hawks use, just as a tertiary. It just doesn't feel good. Uh, Carolina Panthers. Again, I'm a big fan of like. Uh, a nice tealish blue. Yeah, that light blue would go do well. Not a neon blue, but like a light blue. Yeah, a light blue. It would do well. I just don't know that Carolina puts enough asses in the seats for it to happen. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think it brings anybody to Carolina either. No, that that's not an attraction. No. Um... I could see the Arizona Cardinals doing it. Oh, okay. They they are definitely a team that would do it. I mean, they called their fan base the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. Now, the fact that if you're going to call yourself the Red Sea, you should already have a red field. Yes, I agree. You, to say, hey, we play in the Red Sea. Mm-hmm. Um, the Seahawks. I I don't think their colors do so well. I I like the lime green. But if they could pull off a lime green field, I, I'd be all in for it. Because with the dark blue jerseys, mm-hmm. there's enough contrast there for me to be like, okay, I'm my with it. my problem isn't the jerseys in that case. It's the rest of the stadium to just have a giant lime green thing. Yeah, in it. it has 
to be easy on the eyes, which is kind of hard for like lime green can only it, lime green has to be a secondary it or tertiary pops. color. Yeah. It can't be a main color. Exactly, it pops too much. But if like if we were isolating the field, a lime green field for those dark blue jerseys would look cool. But when when you have everything else around it, I think lime green just pops too much. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, last two, the uh, Los Angeles Rams, I don't think no so. Way. I think it would be yeah. better if the Rams uh, kind of like ditched the just plain LA Rams logo that they would have on the middle of the field mm-hmm. or like the Ram logo and just put like, you know, on the helmet, they have like the Ram horn. Yeah. I think that they should just do that from sideline to sideline. That like, would look just cool. a 30 from the 30 to the 30 yeah. centered in at the 50, just big Ram horns in yep. like gold or blue. Mm-hmm. I um, actually think that looks cool. And then the 49ers, 49ers. I could see they would see the I, a nice the gold rush theme. The problem with the 49ers is like, I like that gold, but it has to be an accent. And maroon field, but gold accent. I don't know if I like a maroon field, is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's a toss up. But I think I, I love potential. gold, but it needs to be an accent, and maroon's just too dark. Unless it's like the peng- the old penguins gold, but that's not really a, a nice looking gold. No. Sorry. It's I, I never... No, I never liked that gold. All right. Uh, that's it, right? Yes, sir. And the Browns are somehow looking the making the Bengals look like shit right now. All right. Oh, yeah. And this is something I brought up. So... Well, and of course, we bring this up exactly a week later. Yeah. Uh, so basically... Uh, this is the first time in history where the NBA, NFL, MLS, WNBA, NHL, the U.S. Uh, tennis, the MLB, NCAA, and uh, golf, both men's and women's, mm-hmm. all play on the same day. Yes, on September 10th, this was. On September 10th. Let's just make that very clear, because when we say this is the first instance of it, what? You never know. Yeah. Uh, one week ago from our recording date. <laughs> yeah. Let's see if I can find some of the other instances where it's happened. I mean, like uh, of a top four. I mean, there's not been a case for just like NHL, NBA, NFL. MLB in in so I don't think actually has been ever right for NFL NBA NHL and MLB yeah I have a number of instances right here that I'm just about oh to really get um this is from the 538 this was from 2015 mm-hmm. and at that point in time there were 15 sports equinoxes. Oh. Um, and, and I think it, we're up to 19 before yeah. 2020. Um, so This one is the biggest, though, right? Like, yes, this one has the most. Is the largest in terms of different Because it captures the WNBA, MLS, uh, PGA, LPGA. US Open. Yeah. yeah. But uh, let's see. In 2015, on November 1st, we had World Series Game 5, 12 NFL games, uh, 7 NBA games, and 5 NHL games. Mm -hmm. And um, we had, in 2010, on November 1st, World Series Game 5, which must have been a Thursday or Saturday game, Mm -hmm. uh, because there was one NFL game, three NBA, and three NHL. Okay. And we had uh, back-to-back days in 2009, actually. Jeez. November 1st and 2nd. Um, we had November 4th, 2001. October 27th, 1985. 
That's October 19th, 1980. October 12th, 1980. October 14th, 1979. Oh, the the Pirates won a World Series that year. I like how uh, you remember October, that year. It's like the yeah, only the shining last light time, in your history. The last time that they won a title. Um, October 15th, 1978. October 21st, 1973. October 14th, 1973, October 22nd, 1972, October 15th, 1972. Notice how, like, in the 70s and 80s, it it was every week, it was an equinox, it was just common shit, and then now it's like, oh, it was an equinox. Yeah, Um, because, like, everybody's trying not to play on the same day. And then, uh, October 17th, it happens where we have the most playing on the same day. When everybody's trying not to play on the same day. And then October 17th, 1971, uh, when the Pirates won World Series Game 7, was the first instance of sports equinox between the uh, top four leagues in Jeez. sports. Had and to bring that World one in there. Seri- World Series Game 7 was the first sports equinox. For the top four leagues in yep. our country. Crazy right. shit. Go, Tyler Boyd. Go. <laughs> That's a pretty good, like, you know, I I, I just, uh, we had to bring this one up because it's, it's the most amount of sports playing on the same day ever so far. And it's just in a time when all sports are trying to play on different days to get the viewers. You, because of this pandemic, we have this. Sorry, Bob. All right. Uh, anything you want to close off with today? Sir, I am fine, and I thank you for rejoining us in the sports world. Yeah, no it, problem. It's been a long time, and I was starting to miss the podcasting atmosphere. Yeah, it was definitely uh, while I was away. It was kind of something I missed like you know getting together and planning it was a nice thing to just kind of like let some steam off yeah it was a fun way to do it yeah and uh hopefully next time i don't look like an old man with a whatever this is a (laughs) blinkenberg so yeah uh thanks for tuning in and catch you next time